bad times from the face of the serpent. So this woman, how long is she going to be in the wilderness? A time is one year, time is, a half, is two years, half a time is three, it's a half a year, which is three and a half a year. This is how long she's going to be in the wilderness. And the church, we some of the church don't know nothing about that. You know why? Because they got a seven year uh, uh, tribulation period. Now he said the woman, let me show you, let, let's go to Acts. Let's go to Acts chapter 7. Let me show you this woman that it didn't just start in the New Testament or the church. As they always say, the church started in the New Testament. Man, the church always been here with God's people. Acts chapter 7, verse 37. Just showing you that the church, and who is it, and where did it start? Acts chapter 7, verse 37. Go ahead. And Philip said, If thou believest with all thy heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that. You're in Acts 7 and 37? Uh, all right, bro. Go ahead. Okay, come on. This, is the, this is that Moses which said unto the children of Israel. Uh huh. Who's he talking to? Israel, right? Go ahead. A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren. Yes, sir. Like unto me. Him shall he hear. Go ahead. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spake to him in the Mount Sinai. Wait, 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 wait. He said, This is he that was in the church in where? Wilderness. The wilderness. When did we go into the wilderness as a nation? When God led Israel out of Pharaoh's house. We spent 40 years in the wilderness. He said, this is he that was in the wilderness. Who is he? Christ, Jesus, that was in the, in the wilderness. Read that over 38, go ahead. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spake to him in the Mount Sinai. Yes, sir. And with our fathers who received the lively oracles to give unto us. He would receive what? The oracles, which is the answers. The answers. If you don't know who Israel is, if you don't know who that woman is, you will not have the answers to salvation. I won't. So we got to understand who that church was and what that church name, which is Israel. Go back to Revelation chapter 12. I said, man, we gotta, I got to start doing more prophecy. I know LC be on me about that, but you going to get this. Just making sure y'all understand that the church, which is Israel, started in the wilderness where God led his people from Pharaoh's house for 400 years and went to the wilderness for 40 years. And what did the church start? Did it start with Peter? In Acts, a lot of them think they started on Pentecost. It didn't start, they started way back when in the wilderness. I mean, Revelation chapter 20, we're going to go to uh, verse 14. We have one verse here again. Go ahead. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle. Yes, sir. That she might fly to the wilderness and to her place. But she is nourished for a time, and times, and half a time, for the face of the serpent. What does it mean when she's going to fly with two wings and wings of an eagle? You're going to be on top of a big bird? No. Yeah. Let me show you what them two wings are. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 60. Oh, you spot there. And take some notes now, because folks gonna ask you about this stuff. You're like, oh man, what, what is this? What is that? You got your own notes. So you ain't gotta be calling me. Isaiah chapter 60. We're gonna start with verse 1. Now understand, what is these, this great eagle with two wings? Because Israel riding on it. Man, we ain't gonna ride on the wind. We're gonna be raptured out of here. You don't even understand, bro. Or sis. We got to be transported to the wilderness. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1. Go ahead. Arise, shine, for thy light is come. Mm -hmm. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Yes, sir. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. Mm -hmm. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be. Seen upon thee. When the great tribulation comes, 
It's going to be great dark, darkness that we ain't never seen before. It's going to be destruction from one end of the earth to the other end of the earth because it's going to be so much cloudy. Even the sun ain't going to give them light and all that stuff, man. We, it's going to go down in the great tribulation. But if you follow the woman into the wilderness, we're going to have everything good. Water, food, and all that. And they ain't going to be able to get in there to mess with us. But he found this other woman. You're going to be a part of this great tribulation that's going on. You can't get caught outside that wilderness now. Go ahead. Three. And the Gentiles shall come to the light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. So the Gentiles are going to come to the light. They're going to say, oh, they are the Israelites. We got to help them cause, so we can get a blessing. They're going to help us. So stop worrying about them. Other passport. I know I gave y'all passport, but they're going to provide a way. Just like Pharaoh got tired of us in Egypt, all them destruction coming, coming along, the same thing going to happen today. Ain't they getting tired of black folks now? Yeah. Every time you see it on the news, either we get arrested, or we killing somebody, or we stealing, or we doing all this stuff that's against the law. They get tired of us. And guess what? They making machines to replace us all. They got a plane coming on, and God done told us about this plane inside of the book. They make a machine to replace us all. Go ahead. Four. Lift up thine eyes round about and see. All they gather themselves together. He tell them, look at your eyes, lift, lift up your eyes round about and see. And I'm gonna gather them together. Go ahead. They come to thee. Thy sons shall come from far. Mm -hmm. And thy daughters shall be nursed at thy side. So the sons and daughters of Israel are gonna come from far. This is transportation. Go ahead. Thou, when thou shalt see and flow together, and thy heart shall fit and be enlarged. Yes, sir. Because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. Mm -hmm. The forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. He said, what is the forces? The military. They're going to have a spot for us. They're going to transport us. The forces. Don't worry about the transportation. We're going to get there. Go ahead. The multitude of camels shall cover thee. The drum dairies of Midian and... Oh, we feel with that. Jump out of very nine, very eight. Okay. Let's see who they are. Go ahead. Who are these that fly as a cloud and as the doves to their windows? You're like, who are these that fly as a cloud and doves to the window? Understand, Isaiah never seen an airplane. He says like a bird with windows. When you look at an aircraft, what it look like to you? A bird with windows. This is how he described it in his day. This talking about over 2,000 years ago. He said he come in with these, this precious cargo on a, on a bird with which is a plane to be transported. Go ahead. Surely the, uh, the owls shall wait for thee, for thee. Mm -hmm. and the ships of Tarshish first to bring thy sons from far, their silver and their gold with them, to the name of the Lord thy God, mm -hmm. and to the Holy One of Israel, because he has glorified thee. He's going to glorify us that day. He said, surely the islands shall wait, or the isles shall wait for them, and ships. We're not only just going to have planes, we're going to have ships too. So this is the only time I'm going to go on a cruise right here if I can't get on that plane. And he said, he said, first brought the sons from far, and their silver and their gold with them. Man, we're going to have precious silver and gold money, everything, to make sure we take care of paying our way. So stop thinking you're going to save him some money and all this stuff, man. God going to take care of it all. He going to take care of it all. You go back and read all that on any time. Let's go back to Revelation chapter 12. Just want to make sure you understand this about that woman. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 14. Go ahead. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle. So we read it with some understanding. We decoded that. In Isaiah chapter 60, the woman with this great eagle is talking about the airplane. That's it. Simple. How did I know that? Went back to the Old Testament. Somebody taught me. One of my teachers. Go ahead. That she might fly into the wilderness. Yes, sir. Into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. See, Satan going to get mad because he couldn't get the main portion of Israel, he going to get so mad, he going to go back to the ones that didn't have faith enough to leave. 
He's going to pound them people down. He's going to kill them. He's going to do all this stuff. But go ahead. He's going to tell you right here. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman. Yes, sir. That he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. He said he cast out flood as a woman. Oh, you spot right there. Let's go to um, Revelation chapter 15. Let's go to Revelation chapter 15 and find out what is this flood of water is. Because he casting it out. Revelation 17, excuse me. Revelation 17. Go ahead, Revelation 17. Let's find out who this, what this water is. Revelation 17 and verse. He said, what now? 
He said, and he saw the beast rise out of the sea. Let's define what is the beast. What does that mean? Let's go to Daniel chapter 7 and verse 1. Daniel 7 and 1. Let's define what is the beast. Y'all see it all there. The broad James is a beast. That's all it is, symbolism. That's it. That's all it is. Symbolism. Ray Lewis is a beast. But God describing these beasts as kings upon this earth and making laws to kill us, to hurt us. And Satan is running these kingdoms. Daniel chapter 7 and verse 1. Go ahead, brother. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and vision of his head upon his bed. Yes, sir. Then he wrote the dream and told some of the matters. Now, God gave Daniel, he gave Daniel the Gentile dynasties as we see here. He in Babylon right now. That Bethesda, that Bethesda Shazar, that's what they named Daniel at one time. No, no, excuse me. Bethesda took over Nebuchadnezzar as his son. And he said he had a vision that he didn't understand. Well, God, Daniel had a vision that he didn't understand about Babylon. And this is the interpretation of the vision. Go ahead. Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the heaven stroll upon the great sea. And four great beasts came upon from the sea, diverse one from another. These four winds are the four Gentile dynasties. That's all it is. Gentiles have been running this since, since the beginning of the time. They've been running this since God gave it to them, excuse me. They've been running this for a while. Solomon and Nebuchadnezzar. All the way down to those four kings up there. He said that these four beasts, these four great beasts came up out of the sea, diverse one from another. Go ahead. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. So he gave him the description of it. He showed him his animal-like animal -like characteristics because what these beasts do, they kill like beasts. They hurt like beasts. They devoured all like these. And Nebuchadnezzar, he devoured. Go oh, ahead. Yeah. I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth, and made and made stand upon the feet as a man. Yes, sir. And a man's heart was given to it. This is Nebuchadnezzar, the first beast. Go oh, ahead. Yeah. Which is like a lion. Go oh, ahead. Yeah. And behold, another beast, a second, like to a bear. Uh huh. And it raised up itself on one side, and it had three ribs in the mouth of, of it between the teeth of it. Mm -hmm. And they said unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. This is Medo-Persian Empire, the second Gentile dynasty, or the second wind. Go ahead. After this I beheld, and lo, another, like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of the fire. The beast had also four heads, and dominion was given to it. He telling you right here, this leopard, which is Alexander the Great, he's that beast. He had four wings, which is his four generals. Once he died, because he didn't have a strong enough successor to take over his kingdom, he gave it to them four generals. And they deprived, they, they, they defied, divided his kingdom up into four. And the last kingdom that we are in today is the Roman kingdom. Jump down to verse, uh, to get some understanding, jump down to verse 15. Because we define it, what this beast we see in the Revelation chapter 13. What are they? Because Daniel didn't know. When we first time we read this, we was like, man, I don't know what's going on with this. Revelation chapter 13. I mean, it's, uh, Revelation chapter 13. What did I say? No, we still have Daniel there, right? Daniel chapter, chapter 7, verse 15. Go ahead. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit in the midst of my body, and the vision of my head troubled me. I bet it did trouble me. Think about it. you never seen some of this stuff he describing that beast, these kings. Go ahead. I came near unto one of them that stood by and asked him the truth of all this. Yes, sir. So he told me and made me know the interpretations of the things. Yes, sir. So he gave an interpretation of it. He describing something so that we would know about in our generation, which is we define one of these beasts. Go ahead. These great beasts, which are four are four kings which shall rise out of the earth. That's the interpretation of Revelation chapter 13. That's the interpretation of a beast. It's a king. 
Now let's go back to Revelation chapter 13 and read with some understanding. Revelation chapter 13 and 1. Because we got to know who this woman is. And we got to know who Israel is because Israel is fleeing in the wilderness. From who? The beast and his image. We're going to break the image down too. Revelation chapter 13 and 1. Go ahead. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea. So we saw a king rise up out of the sea. Go ahead. Having seven heads and ten horns, mm -hmm. and upon his horns ten crowns. Yes, sir. And upon his head the name of blasphemy. And he is blasphemous. That is a Roman Catholic church having a king who going to run this military. This is beast. He going to run it. He said one thing, the beast rise up out of the sea. Is this talking about a literal sea? Oh, let's see what he's talking about, the sea. Let's go to Revelation chapter 17, and verse 8. So you go back and forth and decode this book. Because we got to know about this woman fleeing from this beast in her image. Revelation chapter 17 and verse 8. Go ahead, brother. The beast that thou sawest was and is not. Well, anyway, so we're going to pull up again the king that you see it uh, is not, which is wrong. Go ahead. And shall ascend out of the bottomless pit. Read that over. Okay. The beast that sawest was and is not, mm -hmm. and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit. When he talking about the bottomless pit, he's talking about the world, because at this time, the world is going to be in total destruction. And it's going to be at its bottom, on its last limb. Go ahead. And go into perdition. What is perdition? Destruction. Right. Go ahead. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder, whose names were not written in the book of life from the, from the foundation of the world. Mm -hmm. When they behold the beast that was and is not, and yet it is. Because they don't want to have to do beast because he's going to have control over food, resources, and everything. And they're wondering now. We're going to show you a clip on that. Go ahead. And here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. He said, now this one right here, which is this beast of the bottom pit, sit on seven mountains. He gave us a clue here. What is that? Let's see about that. So he giving us the description where, me, where these seven heads are. Read that again. And then, and here is the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits in. Yes, sir. So these seven heads, which is seven mountains, where this woman sits in the church. He said, he said on seven hills, this is wrong. He said on the Quorum Hill, the Venom Hill, the Capitol Hill, the, I might not be pronouncing the hill right. This, he, he got seven hills that he said on. This, this, this is the real estate of Rome where it sits at. And God tells us about this king, where is the location is. It's all in the book. And they know this. He said, and, 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 he said, here is the mind which hath wisdom. If you don't understand this, you don't have wisdom. He said, the seven heads are seven mountains, which is seven hills or mountain range. This is the location of the beast, of the king that's going to be in power at the time that Satan sent him up. Jump down to verse uh, 12. You feel me with nine? Yeah. Okay, verse 12, go ahead. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings. Yes, sir. Which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. That is the day when Daniel took, we talk about Daniel chapter 7, that's the ten toll, which is the European Union. The European Union or the United Nations. They're going to come to power at this time. And they're going to run it. And the United States is going to have to join with them. A lot of people think well, the United States is big. Man, we so small, you can't even see us in this thing. You don't see nobody in the United States. And you got a lot of brothers who can confuse Babylon for the United States. That ain't talking about, it's talking about the system. 
a system, this Babylonian system that has ran all over the world, that everybody's taking part of, that is in the world. He said he saw 10 kings, that's the United Nations, which is we saw on the map, saw on the uh, picture with Daniel's statue, which is the 10 toes. Go ahead. 13. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. Yes, sir. These what is the beast? King. The king. And that is the king of Rome. He sits right here on that throne on seven mountains. That's the clue God gave us. Go ahead. These shall make war with the land. They make war with who? That Jesus. They're going to make war with him. They know exactly who he is. And they're trying to take it down just like their father tried to take down God in heaven. And Michael cast him and the third of angels out. Just like Jesus is going to do the same thing with him. Christ is going to take him down. Go ahead. He shall make war with the lamb. Yes, sir. And the lamb shall overcome them. So I told you the lamb is going to take him down. So stop thinking that you're going to take over any part of this system as Israelites. We always say we want our 40 acres of the mule. <laughs> we want our stuff. We want, man, we ain't going to never get that until Christ gives it to us. He's going to give us our right real estate, which is the nation of Israel, the land, which some people call Africa, or the land of Canaan. That's our real estate. Go ahead. For he is Lord of lords and king of kings. Yes, sir. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. We chosen and called because we preaching the gospel. We know what this book is talking about. This woman right here going to tell you what to be and what not to be. And this is not the place to be worshiping anybody is in Rome. <laughs> Nobody. Go ahead. 15. And he said unto me, the waters which thou sawest. Now this is the waters. He said that this beast is set on the water. What is this symbolized? Go ahead. Where the whore sitteth. He said, the water, go ahead. Our people and multitudes. Saw so, verse 15. And he said unto me, the waters which thou sawest. He said, the water that you see, go ahead. Where the whore sitteth. Where the whore sitteth, the whore sitteth right here. On seven here, go ahead. Our peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. He run a whole lot of nations. You know how? Because he won't give them Christmas. He's the one giving them Easter. That's how you know the whore is running your house. That's how you know this other woman running out. You got the Christmas tree out on December 25th? Oh, yeah, you, you're a Roman. Now, I'm a Baptist. You're a Roman Baptist. I'm non-denomination. Are you a Roman non-denomination? <laughs> these folks come up with all these different type of religions or, or, or sectors in, the, in, in, in the religion and say that I'm a certain sect. No, it's all about Israel. If you ain't rolling with Israel, you nothing. Next. Go ahead. We finished with that. Okay. So I just want to make sure you understand that the water that this beast sits on is talking about people. He ruling and reigning. Revelation chapter 13. Let's go back and read with some understanding here. We got to know who this woman is. Because this woman is going to be followed by the beast in his image. If you ain't in a place of safety, which is the wilderness, you will get dealt with. Try to get a piece of the world. No, man, I just retired. I got my retirement. I got to spend it. Man, you're going to be spending Man, that's paper. It don't mean nothing to God. Man, I just paid my house off. That's materialistic stuff. Don't mean nothing to God. The only safe spot you and I are going to have to be in, the only safe spot that we can be safe in is in the wilderness at this time. Period. Follow this woman. Revelation chapter 13, 1. Go ahead. And I stood up, and I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, mm -hmm. having seven heads, ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns. Yes, sir. And upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And he speak blasphemy. He changed the Lord's prayer today. If, you, if you're keeping up with him, I'm keeping up with him. Go ahead. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. Yes, sir. And his feet were as the feet of a bear. Mm -hmm. And his mouth as the mouth of a lion. Now he's using all the characteristics of what we just read in Daniel. Of all those dinosaurs from Babylon to Nebuchadnezzar, 
Leo Persia, Alexander Gray, he's speaking with all of those tongues. He controlling them all. He said, I saw what? And well, yeah, read to again. Okay. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, mm -hmm. and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. Yes, sir. And the dragon gave him his power, and his seat, and great authority. So who gave these Gentile dynasties all this authority? Satan. Every kingdom that is set up in this world is set up from Satan. Period. 